impressed? How impressed are you with both Atlanta and Trey? So impressed with Trey Young. I mean, there's no other way to put it. I mean, this guy now has risen to the level where he, he's impacting defenses very similar way, in a very similar way to even a guy like Damian Lillard, to a guy like Steph Curry. He is. And those are the comparisons because of the shooting range. Forget that. Obviously, those three guys are in a separate category with that. But I'm talking about his ability to completely dictate what defenses have to react to and what that opens up for other people. And the mistake that Philadelphia made, they came out, and to me, Damn. they just treated Trey Young like another dude. And, and I know they've got a lot of personnel there, and I've talked about this. You got Simmons, you got Danny Green, you got Thibault, you got Max, who's, you know, you can maybe use on them. But those first three guys, you think, okay, we got an elite level number of defensive players. They should be able to make him less efficient. The problem is they weren't sure what they were doing with their blitzes on him. They weren't sure what they were doing in terms of trying to get a guy on him and stay with him the entire possession, face guard him when he gives the ball up, don't let him get it back. They didn't look like they put enough preparation into who Trey Young is and who he has been this entire season. And they paid the price because he got loose early and it gave that team so much confidence. And yeah, they made the run late, but that to me, that was an anomaly because Atlanta went into let the clock run out mode rather than continuing to attack. They got very defensive and insecure with their traps in the backcourt. And they look like a, honestly, an overmatched AAU team. When an AAU team throws that full court pressure on an inferior team, <laughs> that's what it looked like. Right, that, that is. That's what it looks like. You know, you've seen games like that where one team has got infinitely more talent, and whether they're coached well or not, they just swarm the other team in the backcourt, and it's just a turnover after turnover. That's what that looked like to close out the game. And to me, that was in a mindset on the part of Atlanta. I'm thinking about the first 42 minutes because Atlanta did whatever they wanted to do. And now Philadelphia makes the adjustment. And for me, that start Matisse Thibel, let him hound Trey Young the, as much minutes as he can. And when he gives the ball up, you got to blitz him on ball yeah. screens. And when he gives it up, you face guard him and do not let him get it back to the extent that you can. And let those guys go play four on four. And see if Bogdanovich and those guys hurt her. Can they go create the kind of offense Trey Young can? No. And I just think Philadelphia – did not prioritize Trey Young anywhere near the extent they needed to. Legs, I was yelling at the TV. I'm like, why is Danny Green starting on Trey Young? That's not the matchup that you should have off the bat. <laughs> but let me ask you this, because I, I, I felt it when I played, every time we played against the Lakers, when Shaq, well, I would see him, I would call out our big and say, come here, I'm going to involve you in the ball screen. I know it's going to be a chance for me to have an open shot. How are they going to handle Joel and B? Because it's so hard for him conditioning with his injury and also to get up on those ball screens to guard Trey Young. Oh, there's no question. It's, it's a nightmare for him. Um, you know, for a guy that big to be asked to go out there and get out 28 to 32 feet on a perimeter, whether it's a hard hedge or a blitz, either of those things require an incredible amount of energy. And when you look at the guys that have done that historically, Jay, the best, like for instance, take a guy like Joe Kim Noah, who for me, you can make an instructional video on a hard hedge and, and then recover. But guess what? Joe Kim Noah wasn't that involved offensively. But when you're asking Joel Embiid to go down there, get to the block, dominate teams whenever you get single coverage, take that kind of beating and physical contact, and then run back 94 feet because you got to protect the rim and transition. Oh, and then after you do that and they go in a half court set, run out 25, 30 feet. And all these hard edges. I mean, Rudy Gobert does a really good job of it. Again, he is not taking on the offense responsibility that a guy that can beat has. So there's no question. This is legit challenge for a guy that can beat. They spread you out so much that it's 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 going to be a nightmare scenario for Embiid to stay on the court and keep his wind and be able to go get them back on the other end. That's why I think the key is even if you don't want to do blitzes or hard edges, even if it's Thibel and you're going to say, okay, listen, when the screen comes. Fight him over the top and chase him. Matisse Thibel has got ridiculously long arms. He can track him from behind into the areas where he's going to shoot from, into that floater. He's still going to have moments, but it can't look like it did in the first quarter of game one.